Hey everybody, what is up? Chad Wesley Smith here for Juggernaut Training Systems. Gonna be bringing you some more information about strength and conditioning for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, if you haven't checked out the other videos we have on this, make sure you do, so you can better understand how to combine your Jiu Jitsu and strength and conditioning and training into the same week. You can understand how to stay healthier with the help of uh, Julian Vanderlinden, uh, as well as understanding you know what exercises are best suited for what and how to periodize these different phases. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, share it with people at your academy so you can all get better together. Um, today we're gonna be talking specifically about conditioning for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And there are three main energy systems that we are looking to develop to improve the competitor. That's gonna be the aerobic system, so aerobic capacity, a lactic capacity, and lactic capacity. So first up is going to be aerobic capacity, and that is your ability to utilize oxygen as the, the primary energy source and primary fuel for your training, for your competing. And improved aerobic capacity is really going to enhance almost all uh, abilities in jiu-jitsu. It's going to allow you to do you know, more training, uh, more high quality training, whether that's rolling longer or doing more uh, consecutive rolls at, uh, at your school. It's gonna allow you to recover better between those roles so you can have higher quality training. It's also gonna allow you to uh, recover better in between training sessions, whether that's you know twice a day training, every other day training, whatever it is, improved aerobic capacity will help you train more and do more high quality training. So how do we develop it? Besides, you know, the simple answer is just, we'll just roll more or take less breaks. And you know, real quick note on that is that there's some cost benefit to be uh, taken into account when thinking about, well, I'm just gonna roll more. Now, all things being equal, yes, just rolling more is gonna be the most specific way to develop your conditioning for jiu-jitsu, but very rarely are all things equal. So while rolling more could be the most efficient way, it also probably comes at a bit higher uh, fatigue cost, joint stress, muscular stress cost than doing uh, other types of conditioning off of the mats like the aerobic capacity training that we're gonna describe here. So if you feel like you get really beat up from rolling more and more and more, uh, then that may actually end up being a net negative for you, at least in the short term until you can develop you know, more efficiency, more durability on the mats. You may need to do more off the mat aerobic capacity training to increase your gas tank. So just something to consider that, oh, that rolling more is not always gonna be the answer for better conditioning. So there are two main ways that we look to develop aerobic capacity. First off, uh, you know, we're gonna be training mostly in the aerobic development zone, which is gonna be about 60 to 80% of your max heart rate. Now, the first thing that you can do is low intensity, steady state cardio, uh, things that pretty much everyone are familiar with, going on you know, long distance runs, long distance bike ride, uh, swimming for extended durations of time. And that's gonna be done more in that 60 to 70% uh, heart rate intensity zone. And you know, anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes, maybe up to an hour, that's gonna be pretty variable depending on your uh, current fitness levels. 20 minutes may be kicking your ass, or 20 minutes may feel like nothing. Adjust appropriately for yourself. But I think most people doing 20 to 40 minute bouts of low intensity steady state cardio is gonna help you improve your aerobic capacity. A consideration to be made there is that longer, slower work uh, could potentially slow you down a little bit as an athlete, particularly in the short term as we're dealing with transitional fibers, fast twitch, slow twitch. Uh, so if you're already kind of slow, then maybe low intensity steady state is not the best option for you. Also, some of the stuff like long distance running uh, is gonna be a bit more stressful on the joints. So if you've previously had you know, ankle issues, knee issues, even hip or low back issues, long distance running might, might not be a great option for you as it could compound some of the stress there. So my preferred method of developing aerobic capacity are tempo intervals or tempo circuits. And this is an idea adapted from a track coach named Charlie Francis, was coached to Ben Johnson, you know, a bit of a controversial figure, but a lot of really great ideas about training for sport. Uh, and the tempo intervals are gonna be done a little bit on that higher range, I mean 70 to 80% of the maximum heart rate and are shorter 
bouts of aerobic exercise interspersed with low level calisthenics. So it allows you to combine more training modalities. Uh, for me personally, it just keeps the training a little bit more interesting than sitting on the exercise bike for 40 minutes straight. It allows me to you know, get some of those smaller exercises done that can be kind of tedious if done on their own, but organizing them into a tempo circuit makes it a bit more tolerable and it's gonna uh, avoid any kind of transitional fibers you know, going to slow twitch because the bouts of aerobic work are shorter. So how do we perform tempo intervals or a tempo circuit? Really two main ways that we go about it. First, you choose your you know, aerobic exercise, and that can be a lot of different things, and it doesn't really matter which one you choose you know, short of exacerbating existing injuries. It could be running or doing you know, running drills like high knees, backpedal, shuffling. Uh, it could be riding a bike, probably an exercise bike, uh, air bike or spin bike, doesn't really matter. It could be on the rower, you could be doing jump rope. Uh, if you have a lot of joint stress going into the swimming pool for either swimming or doing high knees in about waist deep water, all are good options. You're gonna do that for 30 to 45 second long intervals at what feels like about 70% effort, but go ahead and get yourself a heart rate monitor, plenty of apps out there to help with this uh, and see where you're at in your heart rate you know, we're looking for mostly 70 to 80% of max heart rate. You're gonna do that for 30 to 45 seconds. Then you're gonna hop out of the pool or off the bike or off the treadmill or whatever, whatever you're doing, stop jump roping, and you're gonna do a little bit of low level calisthenics. So you could do this for a fixed number of reps like 20 push-ups or 30 sit-ups or insert so many different exercises that you can do here. Just low level stuff like uh, work for the neck, uh, disassociation exercises to make sure your low back and hips are staying healthy like bird dogs or dead bugs. All kind of different ab exercises fit in well. Small stuff for your grip could be something that you intersperse with these exercises and you're going to do a set number of reps there and then you're back onto the bike or the treadmill or back in the pool, whatever it is you're doing. You want to make sure here that your effort stays consistent and your output stays consistent. So if on the first rep you're on the exercise bike and you're going at 110 RPMs and that feels like about a seven RPE or about 70% you know, percent as hard as you could be going, on your first rep, you need to feel the same way on your 10th rep. You can't let the 10th rep become still at 110 RPMs but now a 10 RPE or now you're having to put maximum effort to keep that pace because that's gonna get us above the heart rate zone that we're looking for. It's gonna cause you to start to build up more lactic acid and not be what we're looking for in this type of training. The other way that you could organize your tempo intervals or a tempo circuit is all with fixed uh, you know, rest uh, work and rest intervals, like 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off. This is the way that I personally do mine. So I'll be on the bike for 45 seconds, then I have a 15 second transition, then I'll do whatever ab exercise or low level calisthenic I'm gonna do for 45 seconds, then I transition back onto the bike for, you know, take 15 seconds to do that, bike for 45 seconds, 15 second transition, 45 seconds of the other exercise, so on and so forth. And you can do that for you know, a set period of time, 20, 30, 40 minutes, maybe up to 50 or 60 minutes if you're in you know, really good shape or you're trying to manage, uh, keep your weight down a little bit more, but usually in that range of 20 to 40 minutes is a good idea. What's so great about tempo intervals is not only do they help develop aerobic capacity, but they're also gonna promote recovery between training sessions, not just because of your improved aerobic capacity helping facilitate recovery, but doing these low intensity uh, sessions is gonna get blood flowing throughout the whole body and help you recover faster. So this is something you could be doing two, maybe up to five times per week, uh, definitely on off days or low days and refer you know, back to our video on weekly organization to better understand that. That's a great place to put it. So for my current training, I, my higher intensity days are typically on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So I'm doing tempo work on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Sometimes Sunday is switched out for like some low intensity steady state, go on a hike, go on a walk, whatever you, know, you enjoy doing. The last piece of aerobic capacity that's important is it's gonna be in every phase of training. It is always present and it is always going to be of great importance to success for the Jiu-Jitsu competitor. 
The next type of conditioning we're going to look at is alactic capacity. So alactic without the presence of lactic acid. So it's going to be those short, high intensity bursts. And the capacity part of things is how well can you repeat them? You know, while you might be able to run fast or jump high or have, you know, be really explosive in a scramble one time, odds are you're not going to have to just do it one time in a match or a tournament, you're going to have to do it over and over and over again. So how well can you do it in minute six of your match as you know, compared to what you did in minute one. So improved a lactic capacity is going to allow you to sustain those high level efforts over and over and over throughout the match, throughout the tournament, throughout training. A lactic capacity work is also a great time to fit in special strength exercises. And those are exercises that mimic the direction, duration, and velocity of the sporting movement. So what we're looking to do is have three to six seconds of all out effort with short rest periods. That's probably going to be about 10 to 20 seconds. And some of that's going to be dictated by your fitness. The more fit you are closer to 10 seconds, you're going to be less fit. You are out to 20 seconds. We, you know, we don't want the, the quality of the work to decline too quickly. Uh, but we also don't want to be, you know, taking full rest periods like we would in a lactic power training. A lactic power training also really important in this because you have to have the power first to then develop the capacity. So if you don't have the power and explosiveness to, you know, get a good scramble to win a good scramble at any point, it doesn't matter how many times you can sc scramble too slow. So a lactic power is going to precede any a lactic capacity phase. So we got to make sure that the power and explosiveness is there so we can uh, develop the ability to sustain it over and over. So a typical alactic capacity circuit, I like to choose one exercise uh, that's a jumping type of exercise, one that's a pushing type of exercise, one a pulling type of exercise, and one a twisting type of exercise. And all of these are done for all out three to six second efforts with again, between 10 and 20 second rest periods. Let your fitness dictate uh, how long your rest periods are. If you're extremely fit, you might be doing a 10 or 15 second rest period, but instead of just standing there, you're actually doing like some low level uh, drilling, just kind of, you know, moving around like you would with, uh, you know, some wrestling type of drills, maybe even throwing in a sprawl or two in between those, but that's going to be for extremely fit athletes. So a, a simple circuit could be something like kettlebell squat jumps for six sets of three reps. With, again, 10 to 20 seconds between each set. And then we're going to rest one to two minutes before going to the next exercise, which could be something like a clapping push up for six sets of three reps. Then we move on, yeah, 10, 10 to 20 seconds between sets. And then one to two minutes before we go to the next exercise, should be a single arm rope row pulling as explosively as possible, doing six sets of two reps each hand, then rest one to two minutes before going on to a barbell Russian twist or doing six sets of two twists to each side. And that's a, you know, a typical alactic capacity circuit. And the way that we overload this from week to week that we make the training progressively harder is in week one, you're doing six sets, week two, eight sets, week three, 10 sets, maybe week four, 12 sets, and then taking a deload. I'd suggest for alactic capacity training that you have three to four week long phases and you do two, you know, one to three phases of this in a row. Uh, and that, a lot of that's going to depend on your competition calendar. If you compete more frequently, very likely that you only have one of these phases. But if you have a long time before competition or you're just, you know, training to be as good as you can at your home gym, uh, then you could get into doing two or three consecutive phases like this, where maybe we go six sets, eight sets, 10 sets, deload, eight sets, 10 sets, 12 sets, deload, 10 sets, 12 sets, 14 sets. So you're building up that capacity over time. And that could be a great option if you feel like those repeated explosive bouts are something that you really struggle with. And the alactic capacity phase is going to be the second to last phase we do before competition. The final phase before competition is going to be lactic capacity. So this is your ability to sustain high level effort for extended duration. Uh, so it's basically like a long scramble or just, just if you're, if you're training or competing and we're pushing the pace, that's going to be test. That's going to be testing your lactic capacity. So here we're looking for 30, maybe up to 50 seconds of continuous high level effort 
with incomplete rest. I like to choose similar exercises for lactic capacity training as I do a lactic capacity train. You just want to make sure that that the exercises allow for pretty continuous uh, effort. It can't be something where you do, you know, you're throwing a med ball and then you have to run and go get it and then throw it and run and go get it where it's a big explosion and then rest. That's a better option for a lactic capacity. Where lactic capacity, we need to be you know staying kind of constant tension throughout the throughout the body as we go. So an example lactic capacity circuit could be box jumps for 30 seconds, then you rest for 30 seconds. You could do uh, the med ball switch push-ups, one hand on top of the med ball, push-up, switch to the other side, push-up for 30 seconds, rest for 30 seconds. Uh, inverted rows or rope ro rows or inverted rows holding onto a gi, 30 seconds, rest 30 seconds. Barbell twist for 30 seconds, rest 30 seconds. And then this would be an example for a master's competitor with five minute rounds or a white belt with five minute rounds, then you would finish. Your fifth exercise could be on the rowing machine, all out, hard as you can row for 30 seconds, and that would be the end of this circuit. You wanna extend the circuit's time to whatever is appropriate for your matches. If you have you know, five, six, seven, eight, 10 minute matches, just add exercises to this to, to make sure that you're working in the same uh, demands that you're going to have in competition. We could progress this week for week to week from week one being 30 seconds on 30 seconds off week two, 35 on 25 off week three, 40 on 20 off, or you, know, you could go 30 and 30, 40 and 20, 50 and 10. A lot of that's just going to depend on your fitness levels and how you're progressing. I'd say a two to three week lactic capacity uh, cycle is going to be good. I mean, one or two consecutive phases of this. Again, this is our, these are our final phases before competition as uh, they're going to be the most similar to the energy systems that are being used in jiu-jitsu competition. But keep in mind that it's also very, very stressful training. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be something that you're doing once, maybe twice a week. That cost-benefit analysis that we talked about for, uh, before, if just rolling more is better, or if doing some training like this is going to be better where you can get some output uh, that's maybe not quite as stressful to your body as just more live rounds would be. Again, remember that the aerobic capacity is present through all of the phases. So the way that it all might set up is we do some alactic power where you, you know, get yourself being able to jump higher, run faster, scramble more explosively. Then we move into alactic capacity and then lactic capacity. Then you go compete aerobic capacity omnipresent through all of the phases. So hopefully that helps you gain some better understanding of conditioning for jujitsu, what, you know, what to do, when to do it. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel, uh, share it with your friends, check out the other videos on our strength and conditioning for BJJ playlist, visit jtsstrength.com, be on the lookout for the new upcoming uh, Juggernaut Jiu-Jitsu Strength and Conditioning AI. Should probably think of a new name that's not so long for that. But uh, if you're looking for a Jiu-Jitsu program that's tailored to you, we have that coming up. So visit jtsstrength.com for more information there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.